What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the spare tire carrier on your 100 series truck. So in this video you'll be able to see several things. You'll be able to see how to remove the spare. You'll see how to put the spare back on the truck. You'll see how to replace the actual carrier mechanism. Why you'd want to replace it troubles with the original carrier system if it's still on your truck and you'll also learn a little bit about the key and the locking system so first off i'm replacing mine because it's broken this is the actual carrier mechanism and you see when you turn it it actually lowers it it'll lower the tire and it's connected by this wire but on my truck this whole piece here is missing so I had to go ahead and order another piece. Now, one big problem with uh, a lot of people's vehicles is they typically have a lock. Now, generally there's a lock inside of here and when you bought the car, new, it came with a key. Toyota did that so that people wouldn't steal people's spares. But this is one thing about Toyota, they make their cars in batches and they listen to feedback. So people talked about how much they hated that lock there because I mean, Who's just still in one tire? Probably some people who are weird, but most people that's not an issue. The problem with that little star key is, it's, it's funny key is kind of like similar to the lug nuts. Uh, dirt, grime can get in there, which will render the key useless. You wouldn't be able to turn it. Uh, it could rust out. A whole bunch of different issues could crop up, which will prevent you from accessing your spare in the middle of the night or whatever. Uh, when you're on the side of the road, you're not trying to be dealing with no key. Another thing is that the key oftentimes falls into the abyss when located, when I mean when it's inside this little case, inside this uh, pouch here. Sometimes it just falls down and people have had that issue as well. Fortunately, the newer system, I just bought this, it cost me like $150. You can get it for like $90 if you are ahead of the game. I'm about to, we're currently in the process of moving and I'm going to be taking a very long road trip and I need a spare like YASAP. So I had to go ahead and pay the extra money and get it sooner. Uh, but the newer ones do not come with the lock, thankfully. So that is that. Now let's look under the truck. First of all, when you're working, I recommend putting down some cardboard. It softens the blow when you're on the ground and you don't get as dirty. And now in the several years I've had this truck, I've never had a spare, but we can see this is my older unit. Um, it looks like, is the lock in there? No. This doesn't have the lock. It looks like somebody pried it out. You can see with all those dings, or maybe that's just from rocks going up, who knows. But mine doesn't have the key. So as we can see, the whole element here that actually holds the tire on is missing. So this is being held in place by four screws at the top. And they are located, let's see, you can see them here. So all we need to do is loosen those up. This will come down. Uh, if you have your spare tire and it's hard for you to access, you could just remove this entire cross member here and you could remove those there and those two bolts over there and you could lower this whole thing down. Uh, or you could try to reach around. I'd imagine trying to reach around the spare to get up there would be very difficult. But if you can get the tire down, this will be a very easy project. All right, tools for completing this project are quite simple. You need some eye protection because you'll be underneath the truck. You'll need some gloves because it might be rusty up under there. I don't have any rust under mine, but the tires are dirty. Um, you'll need, of course, the new carrier, um, and you'll need a 12 millimeter. You use a socket wrench or you could use a regular old wrench. And finally, you need a spare tire. Me, I haven't had one. Um, it do, does, they don't quite match what's on there. These are off of Tundra and they're 20 inch wheels. These are off of 05 um, LX470 and these are 18s. Uh, very good tires. Side note, I woke up one morning scouring Facebook Marketplace looking for one tire and I was willing to pay $150 for it, uh, just a little cheap stock one. And uh, I got this whole set for $100. <laughs> Rims and tires, and they're all in very good condition uh, with decent tread and the uh, nice Michelin. So, yeah, 
that was a big score for me. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I've already loosened up the bolts just so that I could be sure of what size uh, socket or wrench to use. So uh, yeah, I'll just let you see me pull it down. Okay, I don't know why that one was so hard, but it was. Think about working underneath a truck or something like this, you get good neck exercise. All right, so it's down. Very easy. Let's get the other, the new one and put it up. Now you might want to lower it. Uh, it be a good idea to lower it just so that you can easily load up your spare tire so let's go ahead and do that now well i'll just lower it a little bit and then i'll show you guys how to do it with the actual uh equipment but just lower it a little bit not so much that it's swinging and hit you in the face but enough to get a little clearance So what I recommend you do is do one on one side and then screw in the other, another screw on the other side just to make sure it's all lined up. Preferably you want them diagonal to one another. All right, let me show you what I mean by that. So as I was saying, you can see that I have one screw on here in the lower right-hand corner, then one on the lower of I me mean, upper left-hand corner. That will ensure that the other two bolts are lined up, so we don't really have to do a whole lot of fishing and navigating. I don't even have to hold this in place anymore. The rest I'm going to do off camera, and I'll just, you already, you guys saw how easy it is. One thing I failed to mention earlier is the torque settings for the new carrier, if you had to replace yours like mine. I don't know the exact torque settings, but I use that ratcheting wrench. Those are not equipped to carry like real heavy loads, and I was able to use that to easily get it to break them loose. I would say just snug and a good firm half a turn after that. Keep in mind it's gonna be holding up uh, a heavy carrier with a heavy wheel. So don't over tighten it, but make sure it's nice and snug. All right, so here's our old carrier out of the truck and here's the new one. All up there shiny and ready to go. It took a few minutes to do this install. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually lower the carrier Put your spare tire on there and load it back up. If you already have a spare tire on there and you're trying to figure out how the heck do I get this thing off, just imagine that there's a tire on the car right now. So the first thing we'll need to do is dig our toolbox or tool bag out of the side panel in the back of the truck. Once we do that, we'll unravel it. And then you'll find tools. Now, your tools may not look like mine because I am the second owner of this truck. And, you know, it's probably stuff missing or stuff added. I don't know. But the most important things you'll need is this piece here. This piece here. 
And the star of the show is this hook. So you're going to put these three pieces together. You start with the hook, and you take this other piece, a straight piece, with the screw in it. You stick it in. It's You can't mess it up. It's a square. Fit the square in the square. You learn that in preschool. Unscrew the screw a little bit so it can get in there. There we go. Tighten it up best you can. If you have pliers in there like these, you can use this to tighten it up, but it's really not all that necessary. You'll just be using this to spin around. And then you're going to take this piece here, and you're going to put it on here with the actual handle pointing away, not toward it. So you're going to put it in there like that, screw this down, tighten up, and now we're ready for work. So let me briefly demonstrate how this is going to work. You're going to insert this hook end through the hole in the bumper uh, of the truck. And I'm going to show you what that is and where that is in a minute. But what you're trying to do is aim to get the hook inside this crevice and you want to turn it left. Lefty Lucy will lower the carrier and then right will raise it. So let's go ahead and practice on the truck. So we have the hole right here underneath the uh, lift gate. I mean, excuse me, the tailgate. And if you look through there, you want to also be careful not to scratch up your bumper. And we're just turning. That's it. All right, so I have it wound down all the way now, and I gave myself a little bit of slack so that we can move this thing through the tire. Now it's time to go get the tire. All right, so now that we have the tire on the ground, you want to make sure that the face side of the rim is facing up. You want to do that for multiple reasons. First of all, protection of the cosmetic appearance of the wheel. If it's facing down as you're driving, rocks are going to pop up and chip it and you could you know, scrape over something, it's going to damage it. If it's faced up, it'll be less surface down there to get damaged. Uh, the other reason is the carrier can't hold the tire in place properly because when you have it reversed, there's nothing for it to, I wish I would have showed you this before I put the tire on, but it won't sit flush against there and the tire won't truly be secure. This could be what happened with uh, the previous owner. He had it on wrong and it fell off and snatched off or something. Uh, so you want to make sure this is face up and the carrier will sit nice and flush in there. And I'm about to show you how that works now. So we're going to slide this and get it into position. We're going to take this piece and we're gonna stick it through the long way. And then when it's pulled up, you'll notice that there are two clips in there that go flush around the inside and it holds the wheel in place perfectly. Um, I'm gonna actually start cranking it up and as it gets snug, I'll give you a, a closer, closer look. Slide it into place right underneath. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up a bit. And then, as it raises, I'm going to guide it into place. Let's see. Let's go a little bit. Nope, that's not right. Let me show you why. Okay, so you have to be very careful because as you can see, that tab seemed to line up perfectly. But when we look on this side, it didn't line up well at all. And it's 
actually too snug to really fit or move into place. So I'm gonna have to loosen this up a bit. So I've loosened it up just about two turns so I can show you how it should sit to sit. There we are, just like that. So you see that? That hook goes through one of the lug nut holes. That tab is aligned, and so is that tab. So that's how you want to have it. That is full protection right there. So let's go ahead and hold it like this, and we're going to crank it up. All right, so now that we got it in place, tab through the lug nut hole, tab right, right against the inner circle, other tab lined up as well. We can go ahead and wheel it up. And there you have it, nicely in place. Let's take a look underneath so you can see what it looks like from the back side. This is how it should look, nice and flush, all right? Now, keep in mind, you don't want to over tighten this. This is not a bolt, all right? You don't want that, that uh, cord to have too much tension because it could pop. As soon as you're, you start to feel resistance, stop. It's good enough. This thing isn't going anywhere. And uh, that's how you handle a spare tire in a 100 series truck. Hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.